Welcome again uh, to our uh, first Pan African uh, conference for Astro Particle and the Collider Physics uh, Group. Uh, here we are in the CMS control room. Today we will have two uh, tour guides. We will they will explain for us uh, some uh, guide about in the control room on the surface. Now we are on the surface, and then. Uh, one of them will go downstairs to uh, show you some uh, uh, the experiment and how it's going because now uh, the magnet is on. We are preparing you for the run three. So we will have uh, our two physicists actually, uh, Davide and Haifa, and the one uh, of notice that Haifa is also African. She is from Tunisia. So uh, they will uh, go. So the floor is for you now. Uh, but uh, before that, we will have also some uh, introduction about the LHC and the CMS experiment for whom who don't know anything about uh, CERN or the CMS specifically. Sultan will be with you now. Oh, that's that's my turn to. Okay, uh, first of all, I I I kill my my echo. So we are at the at the very very close to the lake geneva yes. in the geneva basin what you might see on this nice picture in the background you have you, you you might see the mont blanc you might see the lake geneva with geneva somewhere around here you might also see the geneva airport runway so that might give a give a uh, some some uh, calibration constant of the sizes and the distances. And you might see also on this right side, you might see the CERN main campus, we call it Meron campus. Also might see the border between Switzerland and France. And might also have the impression that the, the border cuts through the main campus of CERN. Um, this, is, this is some historical thing. On this picture, you can also see you can also see this yellow ring. This is the, the LHC tunnel itself. This is 27 kilometers long. We have four big experiments around it. LHCB, very close to the airport. Alice, that's uh, at my favorite village called saint -Genis. And the two big experiments, the two giants, the Atlas, close to the, the, the CERN main site. And just across the, the ring, the CMS experiment at the nice French countryside uh, at the, the village called Sassy. That's the point where we are at this moment. Uh, we are in the, the control room of the experiment. Um, what you might also see on this, this area of photo that uh, in, the, in the meantime, Haifa just changes the techniques on, on her and are going to show together with Noemi the, the CMS control room first. So what you might see on this area of view that there are lots of inhabited or habitated zones here, sorry, habitated, many villages and towns, uh, almost 100,000 people look, lives inside the, 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 the ring. And that's why we couldn't build the ring on the surface. On contrary, uh, uh, the Americans in Fermilab, they could do this with their much smaller ring they they didn't need to go deep down so that is that is a, a common belief that we had to go down because of the radiation no we had to go down because we couldn't afford the, the terrain here this is super expensive so we went down uh, below the surface we went down to something like 100 meters uh, and actually this was the, the reason for going so deep down was again the need to stay in the the stable rock uh, layer uh, and uh, also to stay away from water ingresses uh, around it. So that's where we are. These are the four big detectors that you might see. Uh, we will, today we will deal with the compact muon solenoid, compact because this is small, you might see the person next to it. Uh, this is just a uh, a 60 meter in diameter, that's a four story building. On contrary, on the Atlas, just uh, over the, across the, the, the ring, uh, we don't show the person. The Atlas size is in each dimension is twice as the, that of the CMS. Uh, 
uh, this is a very big detector. Uh, but the, the main aim for both big detectors is to study the proton-proton collisions and the, the exotic particles uh, uh, creation, exotic like Higgs, <laughs> that was very short-lived. Uh, so, so actually that's the main physics goal of, of uh, CMS and Atlas. On contrary, the ALICE is, is built up for, for studying the heavy ion collisions. Uh, and, and study the famous quark gluon plasma uh, state of the matter. And by the LHCB, which doesn't resemble like the others, it's not a four pi detector. Uh, it, is, it is built for the B physics, the B quark physics and the other exotic like pentaquarks or, uh, or even, even more strange objects. So they are all around the, the, the LHC ring. They work at the same time. I think at this moment, I would give the give the, the floor to Haifa and allow her to show the. Hello, yes, everyone. We are here in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome uh, to CMS. Uh, currently, we are in the control room of uh, the CMS uh, experiment, which is on the surface of the CMS uh, experiment. Where on the ground we have our CMS detectors sitting peacefully. Um, and now actually we are taking data, but it's cosmic data, it's not PP collisions, because we are preparing for run three. So we are collecting cosmic data for calibration work and uh, some work that is needed for all sub detectors. So here, as you can see, we have uh, several uh, uh, desks, but uh, what you can keep in mind is that here is the, the shift leader desk, where is the responsible uh, on all uh, the, shifter, the, the shifters. And uh, his main action and his main responsibility is to ensure a good data taking, where now we have, uh, as I said, uh, cosmic data taken. We don't have PP collisions. But he needs to make sure that we collect as much as possible of data and the good data as well. So uh, here from the, this side, uh, we have um, the technical shifter. His main respons responsibility is to take care of the technical part of all sub detectors, which means that to keep an eye on that's fine. To keep an eye on uh, on the errors that are produced from all sub detectors and inform them, and to make sure that everything is fine and no big issues are happening. So that's good. We move on. Here is the second main part of uh, our control room. This is where our detectors experts are sitting. As you may know, our CMS detector is composed from several sub detectors. And uh, here, this, each sub detector experts, uh, they have a desk where they can look um, uh, at their detector from, from their side and ensure that everything is fine and do their work. I think we can proceed and we start the. Uh, Yes, exactly. So in the meantime, yes. Uh, yes. We, will, we will prepare for being losing them. Actually, they are moving from one Wi-Fi zone to another and also going on the ground. Uh, we will lose them. It is not a problem. That's why we are here. Yeah. Um, so, no, yeah. no, no, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Show the door. Exactly. So now we will start um, going underground. We will cross the first uh, door. This is uh, the door that uh, we take us to the service cavern, which is also called the counting room. And you may see that this color is the color of this door is green, which means that even if there is PP collisions and we have a beam, we can still enter through this door. We will see that we have another door that has a different color, and we will discuss about it a bit later. So, of course, uh, as you can see, we have all these layers. We have all these layers of security to enter the the complex underground, because of course you don't want any people, uh, uh, let's say, underground when the the actual collision happens. Because uh, I mean, there is some uh, radiation that is given by the activation of the materials. Uh, given the particle uh, produced by the collisions. So we need to be sure that no one is uh, downstairs and we have to register all the people that are entering and exiting. So we need uh, uh, our badges. Uh, we need this uh, eye scan uh, device that's the same 
uh, as you seen in the films, that is uh, scanning the iris and identifying the person. And then after you have done that, you are uh, completely identified, you can enter the, the experimental part of the cavern. Mm -hmm. Now you can see the large uh, uh, waiting room for our big elevator. Um, yes, uh, very good. Uh, so well, now we are in front of the elevator and uh, we will start uh, going underground. Uh, you can see that the detector wasn't minus three, so it was uh, around minus 100 uh, meter underground. And uh, the main thing to keep in mind is our um, uh, underground area is composed from two main parts, which is the service cavern, which we call also the counting room, and the experimental cavern. Okay, the service cavern, the service cavern, where we put a lot of electronics, and uh, this is because it's still accessible during uh, PP collisions. So, in case that there are a few cables that needs to be changed, we don't need to stop the collision to change them. And the experimental area is where the CMS detector is, is sitting, uh, taking data. And whenever there is data taken, we cannot access them. Yes, for some reason we lost them. Yep. And then now, of course, we will lose them a bit because we have to take the elevator and go, and go down, but they will be back soon uh, once underground. The, the elevator is uh, really fast at the end that just takes like one minute or no, even less to, to go up and down. And, um, and that's useful because uh, there you see they are inside the elevator and probably now we will lose the connection. And another curiosity is that the elevator region is the most, uh, let's say, safe part uh, in a different way when the user, with respect to the user buildings, because uh, all the elevator and this region is um, in, a, in a separate compartment that is kept under pressure in order that uh, if any smoke or gas is leaked downstairs, the, safe, uh, the safest place is the elevator region. And uh, of course, it's, all, it's also our way, uh, it's the way to go, to go out in case of problems. We have also a really long chain of stairs, but uh, where those can be used only with, uh, let's say, the five gates because, because we have many, many, many steps to do. We have also a secondary elevator that, of course, we need uh, in case as a backup in case we have problems with the first one. But at the moment, uh, uh, that is in the LHC area and it is not directly accessible, but it, it's there for security reasons. Mm -hmm. Now, we managed to keep the connection, I think, nice. and. Uh, and uh, if I should be in the minus two floor or minus three, minus two. Mm -hmm. They are minus they, two. They are a minus two. Yeah. Haifa, are you there? Do you hear us? Yes, um, we can hear you. Uh, sorry, we were just uh, discussing uh, something. Oh. OK, <laughs> so we just, uh, we just uh, 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 arrived in front of the of the counting room where we start uh, heading to it. Maybe we can we can start. So this is the first part is the service uh, cavern. As I said, we call it also counting room. Here is there is a very important and nice uh, thing to show you about uh, our experiment is actually we have two big shafts in the CMS and one of them is this one. And as you can see, the hole how is how is big hole and how is deep. And actually, the shaft is used to bring down materials uh, to minus 100 meter that we will use uh, and we used uh, uh, for for the for the commissioning work and for CMS work in general. So this is the first one, but I will show you the second one as well a bit later in the experimental uh, area of our detector. Yeah, now Aifa is entering the counting room, so-called counting exactly. room, that is like the brain of our OCMS, where all the electronics bore for uh, triggering, data, data readout, uh, control of the electronics, control of the power is kept. And um, you will see a large wall with full of cables going uh, to the experimental I'm muted cavern. You can also show the, um, all the cables going in the experimental cavern, I think. Uh, do you hear, do you hear me, David? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Actually, okay. actually, it is noisy only for you. Yes, yes. Don't worry. Ah, okay. Super. Okay. The sound quality is perfect. Okay. Very good. So as uh, David just said, we are in the counting room where we have a lot of electronics. Here you can see, for example, one of the main uh, 
Uh, an important part of the electronics that we have is the detector safety system, which is very important in case that there is a, uh, an issue. We do not want to, to, to lose uh, um, uh, data and stop the experiment in case that we want to deal with something with the, with the, with the DSS system, which is the detector safety system. Uh, here, if we move a bit further, we have the trigger and the dark system. Uh, the trigger is actually the system that uh, will decide if we keep an event or not, uh, as uh, may, um, uh, some of you know, um, is that actually in uh, CMS, we, uh, we receive a lot of uh, events, a lot of data, and actually, uh, uh, technology point of view, it's very difficult and hard to keep all the events. Uh, so the trigger system comes in place to decide if the event is good or not uh, to keep it. And uh, this is to avoid a huge amount of useless data that we don't want to analyze it. But the data acquisition system, the DAC, is the one that will digitize the events so we can uh, process them at the computer level. And uh, yeah, you can see that there is a huge amount of, of cables and optical fibers, as, uh, as Naomi is showing you now. Something also more to show you is here you can see some red lines and these red lines actually it means that even if uh, we have a general power cut in CMS, these cupboards, they will always have elect uh, electricity because it's very important for the experiment to keep this, uh, this part of the, of the electronics uh, on. You can see as well there, same thing. Here we have a lot of uh, uh, high voltage for the, for example, here the high voltage of the gem um, of the gem sub detector. The gem sub detector is one of the muon chambers that we have uh, in CMS. Is the gas electron multiplier, and it's actually uh, quite new technology. It's very new and uh, that has been uh, developed very recently. And yeah, and. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hi, here also. It yes, you are working on Jim. <laughs> yes, yes, I understood. But uh, I want just to notify the audience so that uh, not all the power system, as you see, many racks, but uh, why we keep uh, part of the power system and some electronics in the service cavern and not inside the, the experimental cavern. It's just because uh, during the run, uh, we cannot access the UXTC because of radiation. So yes. if there is something happen, uh, some emergency, we know this uh, thing is we, when we are taking the data, we need to uh, make any intervention. So it's uh, firstly we go to UXTC, but sure? it, yeah. uh, then uh, going to UXTC it will be difficult, uh, almost impossible. Yeah. Indeed, exactly, that's it. So um, now, thanks, uh, Shima, for the, for the comment. So and now we finished uh, with the, the part of the, uh, of the electronics, just a few things to tell you about this room, which is closed. Uh, but um, uh, in CMS experiment, we have uh, several subdetectors, as I said, and many of them, they need gas. So a lot of uh, subdetectors, they rely on the gas to, 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 to operate. Also, we need a lot of uh, cooling, uh, for example, for the tracker. I mean, one of the subdetectors that need uh, some cooling, which relies on, on, on some uh, gas and uh, in general to, to, to cool the subdetector. So here, for example, we have the room where the final treatment, yeah, we can open, where the final treatment of, uh, uh, the, final treatment, uh, of the gas is, uh, is happening. Actually, the main source of, uh, of the gas is on the surface in the gas room, but here on the ground, we have the final treatment and final uh, step before getting injected in all subdetectors. So yeah, you can see not all the people they have access, but I have some privilege to open it. <laughs> so we can uh, proceed. Here's one one of the very nicest doors in CMS that even myself, I dream to go through it, which is the door don't that we take. No, don't, <laughs> don't, don't. <laughs> So 
here we have the the door that we take you to the um, to the LFC tunnel, but actually we cannot access it unfortunately. And it's really because if you in case okay nowadays it still can be uh, done by uh, some experts, but when we have for example PP collision and we have beam, if you cross this door the beam will uh, will be off, so we we'll go off. So basically, uh, this is the patrouille that no uh, that uh, Zoltan can say more about it if he wants. But uh, yeah, just a long story short, it's a very nice door that we take you to the LSC, but unfortunately today we will not be able to do it. <laughs> yes, exactly. In general, red doors are no good zones. No. I did, <laughs> no, I did once during the pandemic. <laughs> yes, if it is needed. <laughs> One day. Yes. As an alternative, however, we have a good option that you can imagine yourself on the LSC tunnel without really going to the LSC tunnel. And as you can see that you can make a fake picture with the with the tunnel. I mean, as you are there. I you have a technical really comment, not on that. Uh, <laughs> we, we follow the chat as well. There is a discussion yes, is. about the frame drops. Uh, that our connection to underground is not perfect, but of course we can still follow the the, the video. Oh. Yes, it's a, it's a good time to ask for questions. If there are any questions, please don't uh, we go. We expect the questions ahead. to come on in the Q&A session. If okay. you have any any question, please don't hesitate. Please. Think we can proceed? OK. Uh, I think also if uh, some students need uh, questions mm -hmm. and they cannot express in English, we have a panel list uh, coming from almost all the countries uh, in yeah. Africa, so you can speak uh, in your language and they, we will have a translation. Yeah. yeah, and also you are lucky because I speak almost all the language of Africa, French, Arabic and English, so you can feel free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we uh, start heading through uh, the second door. Um, this door has a yellow color, as you can see. And the previous one was green. And the difference is that because this door is not possible to go through it when we have a beam. So this is the main thing that, uh, th this is why we have different colors in uh, for the doors. Hi, I have a question. Yes, yes so, please, go uh, ahead. Please tell the audience why we have this uh, dangerous sign above the- Oh yeah, yeah just, the, just the, blinking. The ah, so why is it yes. blinking? Yes. Of course, because this is, we have the magnetic field that it's on and it's operating at 3.8 Tesla. So this is dangerous because some people are, um, are sensitive to the magnetic field and therefore there are a few conditions to, to uh, follow and to check before going through uh, the store. So now we will, you will enter to the magnetic field. Yes. But the precautions that oh, people... by the way, ah, yes. so you can already exactly. check, Before you, you can see through. this effect, exactly. <laughs> She's already in the magnetic yeah, field. So if you, people don't know now, the, the uh, these nails, it's a magnetic nails, and it's referred to the direction of a magnetic field, which is behind the Haifa, if the camera yeah. count. So this is the direction to the center of the CMS uh, UXC. Exactly, so yeah. between the two underground caverns this is heavy a pillar a big pillar yeah. made, made exactly. of uh, iron concrete this the thickness is something like seven meter uh, she is just i mean uh, this is because this is because it. it's lighter yeah exactly but even after because seven meters you still have a sizable magnetic field yes yeah, yeah you will see inside the exactly. will be strong. So, so you see the wrench is still hanging one, down no. No. without changing its its orientation uh, and now you will see that ifa will take a special key exactly we have a specific yes i, I can I, I let you do it and i can explain um no? special key is necessary because now that uh, the magnetic fig is on uh, uh, we have to be really sure that everyone that enters also comes out uh, in time and uh, this is a special uh, another level of protection so the more we, we go mm -hmm. closer to the collisions, the more we, we are, let's say, careful about uh, going close to the detector. Thank you. 
Now, Haifa, across this wall uh, uh, mentioned by Zoltan, this seven meter wall to go inside mm -hmm. the UXC. And we may lose uh, also the, the video, uh, the camera, because of the magnetic field inside what, uh, the UXC. Will, so rather what will happen, uh, Noemi and Haifa needs to change the, the camera gimbal, the stabilizer. Uh -huh. That, that wouldn't survive in the magnetic field. So okay. from now on, you will you will see a bit of a shaking in the in the video. Yes. Uh, please excuse us for that. Um, and also, uh, once they are in, the camera might lose the focus. But Noemi and Haifa are very experienced with it, so we, they will try to avoid. It doesn't happen everywhere. Yeah, and another curiosity, uh, you will see with this corridor that is U shaped. That's because we yes, don't so want any. We don't want any, let's say, free corridor for neutrons or uh, neutron particles to pass through and reach out. So that's why we we need a U curve so that uh, we don't have uh, any uh, view of sight with respect to the collision point and the um, almost all the particles are absorbed by the concrete around uh, around the cavern. Mm -hmm. So now the magnetic field is starting <laughs> to no, increase. No, they, they are just, just ah, changing yeah, the camera mount. I don't know why they <laughs> stopped the video, but... Yes, uh, sorry for that. We just need to change um, the gamble as, um, as uh, Zoltan just mentioned. So some technical stuff to be done. <laughs> So now yeah, our experiment in CMS is uh, ready for uh, accepting the uh, the particles from uh, round three. But to, yeah, we need to be to check. So this is why we keep the magnet on exactly. on its uh, power uh, three point eight Tesla. And they actually, this is the highest magnetic field in all the LHC experiments. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And also so the highest have... uh, energy. Um, I mean, it's the magnet with the highest okay. magnetic energy in the oh, world. I still hear them. Because yeah. it's really large it's for it's for tesla that is not the highest uh, yeah. field but it's uh, like on uh, more than two meters square cube yeah so what what i meters cube the, the the number in my head says 2.2 gigajoule gigajoule <laughs> yeah we have a security <laughs> system that is able there? to dump uh, the, all the current that is contained uh, that is like 50,000 amps uh, 16,000 uh, 16, 16, amps uh, and if we are able to dump it uh, uh, outside, but that all that energy would be would let's say uh, be able to to fuse like some meters cube of uh, gold in a second. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Gold, like so. That. so now and we are in front of the door. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So um, if yeah, oh, super. Okay, so you can check the the magnetic field. The effect <laughs> of the magnetic field is actually look and just hold without anything. <laughs> To check the effect. I mean, uh, how strong it is. As long as we, as as long as we That's get good. closer to the detector, it gets uh, stronger. So now we will enter to the most exciting part of the of the of the experiment area, which our beautiful detector is sitting peacefully taking cosmic data. It's unfortunate that it's closed. It means that it's, uh, I mean, as you may know, our detector is composed from a barrel and end caps. And some time ago, we choose to, to be open. So you can see the barrel part and you can see the end caps. However, it's still very and very good to see, even if it's closed. We exactly. will- Every uh, state has its beauty. Yeah, exactly. it's a strong woman. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, as Haifa said, we are in the so-called craft. Uh, status okay. now. This is the cosmic run with full field. Uh, this is a, a needed to calibrate our detector and exactly. calibrate the detector sub detector positions. Uh, and this will be followed by the beam uh, quite soon. Yeah. We will close up the detector cavern on this Thursday with a formal patrol. And then uh, no virtual visits will be allowed to go in, unfortunately. So now you can, as you see, Haifa. It's uh, flying. This, yeah, it's flying because <laughs> the magnetic field is very strong. I just want, wanted to just uh, like uh, clarify one expression said by Haifa and the Zoltan is cosmic run, uh, what, which meaning that there is no meaning, but what we measure if there is no beam, uh, there is no particles. No, there is a particles that come from cosmic. So it's mainly mayons come from cosmic rays, and this is why we say that it's a cosmic oh, 
So <laughs> it's like uh, we measure this uh, cosmic runs and then we have this like a background for uh, the real uh, uh, inter uh, collisions that we have uh, uh, may another millions. So we can distinguish one from the real collision and from those coming from the uh, cosmic. Okay. Usually, I mean, you may see these objects flying, and of course, that's also dangerous for the detector, and not for those objects. But yeah, why, yeah, don't for example, worry. <laughs> yeah. it will no, not fly. No, no, we should not be <laughs> choosing the parts no, no, of these branches. Ah, uh, yeah, that. be careful but for have, this small uh, one. We have like, um, for example, all the hammers, all the extinguishers that are inside the cavern should be non-magnetic, because if mm -hmm. not, uh, one while it's working. Would lose uh, his screwer and goes down inside exactly. the detector, not the best thing. But in this case, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> so these wrenches will not fly through the cavern. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to make to sure that it doesn't happen. <laughs> no, no, it, no, will, it not. will not happen with them. <laughs> but, uh, but of course, with lighter things, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, also, it's, it's, it will depend on where you are. Inside. Be very careful. They hit hard. Yes. <laughs> and then, yes, uh, I mean, we, of course, we, uh, we need. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it is a too easy question, but uh, the, the fact that we need uh, the fact that we need uh, so strong uh, magnetic field is given by the fact that we want to measure the momenta and uh, in charge of the particles. Uh, that depends no. on the sign and let's say strong strength of the magnetic field. Okay. So the higher the highest magnetic field, the the higher the resolution we can have on uh, high energetic particles. Yeah, okay. So we have yeah. a question in the QA. Mm -hmm. It's about. Uh, ah, yes. Actually, I didn't it's know. A, I yeah, didn't know it was that. answering. I was. Uh, yeah, so it's what. Yeah, he was answering that question, but he, did, he doesn't know before. <laughs> so, so it's why you have a strong magnetic field, as uh, David said, that we, as you have, um, when you, as a higher magnetic field you have, as more bending of the curvature of these uh, charged particles. So we can cover the track or, or can reconstruct the a track of the, or trajectory uh, in geometrical trajectory of the particle in a, in a smaller uh, radius than we have in our uh, uh, friend Atlas. Uh, yeah, guides. exactly. So yes. this is what I would like to make a remark. Yes. Uh, before we would, uh, put CMS in front of Atlas. So mm -hmm. in order to measure the momentum, you need a sufficient uh, change of the, the flight path. I mean, a sufficient curvature of the, the, the particle path. Uh, exactly. You can imagine yeah. that on a, on a short, uh, short, almost straight uh, uh, track, you cannot fit any helix. So <laughs> you need a sizable uh, deflection. In order to do that, either you use a strong magnetic field and then you can measure it with a, with a quite a small volume, like uh, CMS, or you use a weaker magnetic field, but you have to let the, the particle fly. In, in, C in Atlas, they use a weaker field, actually a more complex field than, than this, but it, it doesn't matter from, from, uh, for this explanation. So, but, but uh, their uh, equipment is, is full of beams, full less, of yes. sector parts, and, and, and this is very complex. And this, this uh, uh, distorts the magnetic field. They have to, in order to make that for a good measurement, they have to measure the magnetic field from point to point. Of course, they did it very well. They did it at a very high precision. But of course, every measurement has its own error. And the, the net error of the, the momentum measurement is dominated by this in, the, in case of Atlas. In case of CMS instead, we designed the CMS iron yoke, the red part, such a way that it operates uh, at least in the butter region at uh, almost at the, the saturation field that is two Tesla. So we have a very homogeneous field, not just inside the, the magnet, but outside as well. Yes. Of course, since we use a, a huge, amount of material to do this. We have 14.5 thousand tons of, of material in the detector. We might expect some collisions of the flying out muon and the, the iron nuclei. This will change a little bit of the path. We call it multiple uh, uh, scattering. Uh, but of course, this is what dominates our measurement precision. 
what you might imagine that the two systematic errors in case of Atlas and CMS are different sources. But if uh, on contrary, we measure the, let's say the fermion mass in case of the Higgs decay, the, the, the same invariant mass, we might be sure that this measurement, the, 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 the result doesn't come from the, the, the systematic the type, uh, the exactly. type of uh, experiment. Exactly, so yes. that's, that's quite, uh, right, uh, quite important. This underlines why we do need at least two detectors working on the same, exactly. and why we do have two different technologies of the detectors. This yes. is not only for the muons, but also for any other detector components. Oof, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, as uh, you may say, uh, see Haifa when she plays with the uh, ferromagnetic uh, keys and inside the CMS, she was saying like uh, in the other area or in another place inside the cavern, she feel like the, the Matida keys with her doesn't feel this strong attraction and this is like normal because the distribution of the magnetic field uh, lines so it's uh, distributed everywhere in the inside the cavern with different intensity this is why the right. yeah the like we say it's a, it's a, it will be the the bending of uh, of charge exactly. so yeah that yeah Thank you very much for all these uh, nice explanations about, especially about the magnet, how it, uh, how it is working. But I was wondering if maybe we can say a few words about the, the detector uh, in general with all the sub detectors that they are uh, there sitting inside um, CMS experiment. Which Thank actually- If you don't mind, I share yes. the detector uh, uh, yes. sketch. And, and uh, as you as you are going to explain, I will just show with the with the mouse. Okay, super. We can do like that. Yes, go ahead. Very good. So um, our uh, detector is actually is very complete because it's composed from several sub detectors, and each sub detector is meant to do and to measure something specific. Okay. So the first uh, layer, which is the closest to the beam, we, uh, it's uh, the tracker, and uh, the tracker uh, has a very complementary role with the magnetic field because uh, the tracker serves to measure the trajectory and the momentum of the charged particles in collaboration with the magnetic field. So um, after the tracker, you have uh, the electromagnetic uh, calorimeter, where the electromagnetic calorimeter uh, in combination with the tracker would decide if the particle is a photon or electron. Because if you have charge in the tracker and you, you have a trajectory in the tracker and you have deposit energy in the electromagnetic calorimeter, therefore you can decide that this is charged particle, which is an electron or a, uh, or a, a, a positron. Depends on the bands, if it's, depends on its band, you can decide also on the charge. If you have only deposit energy in the electromagnetic calorimeter and you don't have a trajectory in the tracker, therefore this particle is neutral. And then this particle is photon, okay? After the electromagnetic calorimeter, you will have the hadronic calorimeter. And the hadronic calorimeter, as its name says, it will, um, it, it, its main purpose is to identify the hadrons which in combination with the tracker, you will understand if it's a hadron, if it's a neutral hadron or a charged hadron with the same principle for the electromagnetic calorimeter. After the hadronic calorimeter, you will have the magnet, which is the masterpiece sitting to it. And with, as I said, with the collaboration with the tracker will help you to identify the trajectory, uh, sorry, the momentum and the charge of the, of the charged particles. And on top of all this uh, sub detectors, the last layer of the CMS uh, detector, which is the muon uh, chambers. And the muon chambers, because they come at the end, because the muons actually, they fly the furthest. So they have, the, they have a long lifetime and they can cross the detector uh, and uh, you can identify them in the, in the, uh, at the end of the detector in the last layer. And uh, you can see that the muon chambers, they are um, uh, 
uh, one layer of a muon chamber and one layer of iron, which is red. And the main uh, actions of the irons is to stop the magnetic field and to close it. Because as you can see here, you have one, um, uh, sorry, one muon chambers, which basically composed from DT, drift tube chambers and uh, RPC, resistive plate chambers. And then you have the irons in red. So you can see that our detector is really composed from several technology and each sub detector is meant for something uh, and uh, to identify uh, uh, some particle uh, from all the standard model particles. Okay, I hope I made it. Uh, I hope I made it clear, and you have an overview uh, of uh, the CMS uh, detector and how it works and the technologies that are uh, used for each sub detector. Uh, we please should show us, Please show yeah. us also the, the shaft uh, on top of your of your head, if possible. The shaft. Ah, good point. Yes, because I said I would show it, but then I did not show it. Yes, that's a very good point. And now we have the pit head cover closed, so it's uh, yes. Ah, okay. Whatever. It's difficult yes. to see. Uh, it's if difficult you have a laser, to see. Point, laser, laser pointer, maybe. That is the main shaft where. where I don't have the laser. We don't have laser, right? Okay. So this is okay. I will give you an overview so you understand what it is. Okay. Now it's closed, so it's dark. You don't see big thing because it's closed on the surface, which is 100 meter above, okay? Because we have the magnetic field, so we close it. Now, this shaft is similar to the one that we showed you from the other side. And this shaft is actually has been used to uh, lower down our CMS uh, detector. So um, uh, another thing to say is that our CMS experiment was built on the surface. Um, and then we divide it into slices and we lower down slice by slice into the cavern. And you can see this uh, shaft is actually big, but it's comparing to the size of the experiment is not uh, very big. It's basically uh, the size of experiment with a few centimeters more to be able to draw it, to lower uh, down the slices. And uh, the reason why we did it uh, like this is because we had a very big challenge um, to lower down our experiments and to make uh, the shaft because actually we have the Jura uh, water bed that it's at 70 meter and that was a very big challenge technical point of view and also uh, uh, budget to make this uh, shaft to uh, bring the experiment down. So it's a very um, interesting to know this uh, the story about the shaft because actually it had a big part of the history of cms how we we lowered down yeah. we got in the uh, meantime we got a question we have a question uh, yes. yes concerning the why so, do we have only two tesla in the in the iron why we have 3.8 in the the middle actually this this is a return yoke this encapsulates the magnetic field and the field strength is depending on the on the volume indeed roughly roughly speaking and the volume is bigger in the the uh, the magnetic iron so uh, that is that is no second magnet this is just the returning field lines of the of the the magnet okay we have also another question but not in q a in, in the chat um why can't you access the lhc tunnel uh, the previous doors or our doors or for LHC, while you can get a near CMS detector, I can see the beam peep line there. Yes, this is a good question because it's like LHC, it's not only for CMS. So if CMS it's closed, that's not, not me uh, or not working. This is not access, meaning, right? not, not meaning ah. that LHC doesn't work. So LHC have four main experiments. So this is like a global mm -hmm. uh, working area for the, the, the whole LHC. While, uh, so we do all the experiments keep separately, working separately as much as possible from going inside mm -hmm. the LHC tunnel. It's a 20, 27 a kilometer uh, around. 
So this is why we keep this only for emergency. And as Haifa mentioned before, once this, uh, um, this door is open, that's meaning there is emergency. And the, at, the, at that point, beam, uh, the beam, uh, beam line, I mean, the uh, protons will be stopped. Yeah. So all the four experiments will be stopped at that time. And not just the protons, but also uh, yeah, all the magnetic field, currents, everything, yes, everything and, will be stopped, yes. And, uh, in order to be able to test the LHC met, uh, uh, equipment, uh, the LHC had to be patrolled and has to be sure that nobody is in. Yeah. So that's why uh, we cannot enter there. And also, as I said, on Thursday, we are going to patrol the CMS as well. So from then on, we cannot go into CMS either. Yeah, we have another question. It's physics. <laughs> Why may you penetrate the detector? It's a higher penetration power and the, yeah, for mayon. Yeah. As you may know, that mayon is the second heavier, our second mm -hmm. generation lepton. And so, from this view, you might see that most of the detector is not below the shaft, but below the rocks. Yes. And we still can see cosmic muons. So they even, cannot just simply penetrate the the detector yeah, but yeah. they can penetrate 100 meters yeah. of rock yeah and actually it's known that the natural radioactivity is dominated by main come from cosmic this is why when we say when we say we have a cosmic run we mainly have only millions in the detectors not not yeah. uh, nothing else this is i mean this is the nature of the main itself i thought we give back the word to you Thank you so much. Very good. Yes, we hear you. So uh, here we came to another place where we can see uh, better the shaft. Maybe you can have a better view to understand uh, a bit more uh, what you are talking about. It's, yeah, it's dark. You cannot see much, but yeah. So this is 100 meter of uh, deep. OK, so the second thing that we would like to show you is that uh, one of them uh, important part in our experiment. The camera cannot go, get close because of the effect of the magnetic field, otherwise we will lose it. Here we have air pads. These are the legs of our detector because um, as mentioned before, our detector a few months ago were open. So the end cap was separated from the barrel. And then we use this air pads to actually bring uh, the, the end caps slice by slice to close our detector. So, Sorry, you can see that we have one from here is the orange one. Those are the air pads and they have uh, 20 atmosphere, if I'm not wrong about the number, uh, each one of them to be able to, uh, to uh, uh, move each uh, part of the end cap uh, closer to, the, to close the, the detector. And you can see here how strong the, the magnet effect. That's why the camera cannot get closer, which is ah, which is really <laughs> strong. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> no, we work. <laughs> I'm extra careful. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can see it clearly, but as long as you told me be careful, it means that you can see it, which is very good. <laughs> yeah. So you can see how strong it is. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also, when everything is uh, is off, there is some residual magnetic field in those uh, in those legs. Yes, so now indeed. he said is a maximum. Yeah, but that we can show only with paper clips. Yes, yes. <laughs> exactly. Now yeah. it is a much heavier. Uh, as video. you see, this is uh, the the video is not very clear. This is the magnetic field uh, effect <laughs> on the camera. This is really lovely. We can uh, go like this. Very good. Okay, we take it from the other side. This is a chef, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, that was the last piece of the detector that uh, we put it very recently. If uh, a couple of months ago, I think a couple of months ago, we did not have this part. So that came. I'm happy to see this part, which means that uh, everything uh, is there and we are ready for uh, we, we have this part since the beginning, <laughs> but it was yes, it was hidden. Was in there. this, uh, this yeah, garage. it was in this. Yes, exactly. Yes. So yeah, finally, meta, we put uh, it. Because that piece is one that remains, uh, my, let's say, radioactive, radioactive for more time because it takes all the radiation at a low angle. Yeah. Exactly. And also yes. We have to put it away from the the way. Because if yes. not, we cannot end. Uh, exactly. So. Yeah. It's called the hadronic. The. Uh, 
is the forward part of the hadronic alarm meter. Yeah, it's, it, we are fine. Uh, but, uh, maybe a, a silly question, but do you feel the magnetic field also in the safety shoes? Uh, and the issues, yes, actually, I was try I was trying to show you um, a few minutes ago that if you actually try to take your feet a bit uh, away from the from the floor, actually, you will feel the magnetic field, not here, but some but uh, near to the detector, places, the detector yes. yeah, is in some places. It depends on the material. You will feel it. I mean, there, yeah, if you yeah, here it is. If you, yeah, if you here it is. <sighs> <laughs> it's really strong, huh? <laughs> uh, actually, actually, we, we do not recommend the steel toe oh, uh, okay. safety shoes. There are some safety shoes where this heavy toe or, or uh, hard yes. toe is, is but non -magnetic. It's not magnetic. Okay. But this happened. To, I have a non-magnetic one. I never feel this. But, I feel uh, this. But, but uh, mm. these nice shoes like uh, Haifa has are, are, are really mm -hmm. a magnetic steel, steel, steel <laughs> Yes, this is nice. Exactly. <laughs> actually, nice. and actually it's mandatory That's because nice one of the... <laughs> <laughs> actually, it's mandatory because to go underground, you need to have your personal protective equipment, which we call the PPE. And one of them is the shoes and the helmets and the dosimeter as uh, uh, explained by uh, Davide. Uh, some time ago, some minutes ago. Mm. Okay, Haifa, we so, have, yeah. uh, from we this have only from seven side. minutes for the visit. So very I good. Th I think if we have uh, extra question, please raise it. Yeah. Or raise your hand. Okay, we have two. Uh, okay, what is the meaning of those written numbers behind you in, yellow, in the yellow printed pillar? Ah, yeah. Ah. This is uh, this is uh, I think it means this that the uh, the, uh, exactly the tones twenty tones for example you see here seventeen tones yeah it's, I think it's uh, yeah it's the weight as um, as the Zoltan said it's yeah. the platforms I think that this is the one that is um, uh, I have to say it uh, to uh, Support the the the, uh, the HF part of the detector. Okay. If I'm not okay. mistaken, so yeah. Okay. Yeah, the but it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah. Okay. The second. Just question. to hold. Okay. The second question: Are there any studies to reduce the volume either of the detector or at the accelerator, thus making <laughs> the construction of such yeah. experiments accessible? Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, so we the, are. Uh, it's a CMS. It's a call. It's abbreviation of compact exactly. male solenoid. And as we have much magnetic field, as higher magnetic field, we could reduce the CMS mm -hmm. after we finish this visit for cms we will have atlas which yeah. exactly which have the same purpose and they measure the same thing is like cms but it's much bigger than cms so it's, what exactly. difficult to, it's difficult to make it smaller because at some point you have to fit inside all the layers and uh, exactly yeah. the, the the detector size is dominated by the hot color, color yes meter. so yeah. you you need a, a length to stop the the particles and the bad news is that as we go for higher and higher energies, this will grow in the yeah, future as we well. We have to study to make it bigger. But then. if I can answer on the second part of the question as well, the, the accelerator, however, the accelerator uh, depends very much on the magnet we can make. With the uh, niobium titanium, uh, the accessible technology of, of that time, we could go up to something like 10 Tesla, and uh, since we also had the, the, the tunnel excavated already, this was fine. But if we want to have a higher energy, let's say 100 TEV, uh, yeah, 100 TEV, like in the, the FCC on the plans, exactly. we will need to excavate a much bigger uh, uh, accelerator ring, something like 100 exactly. Yeah, long, yes, yes. and we have to change to a new technology that can go up to 15, 15 Tesla. Yeah, because uh, uh, yeah, the curvature goes uh, with um, a strand of a magnetic field. Exactly. So. exactly. Yes. But there yes. are also studies on the linear accelerators and the new Wakefield technology, and that could reduce the size of the accelerators. But of course, still we have a longer journey 
to go. Yeah, they yeah. Come, this is also uh, we we care about budget as well. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> and then budget. Then <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so I think now we come to close of this uh, visit. I thank you, Zolta, and Naomi behind the camera, uh, <laughs> and uh, for Davide and uh, Haifa, uh, for you as well, uh, participants and audience. I hope you enjoyed your visit to our lovely detector CMS. And uh, we will, uh, yeah, we have a new qu qu question. Yeah. Are you feel any sense when you are enter the strong magnetic field? I can express, yes. I can, uh, I can yeah, also. Uh, as as uh, you see in the camera with, um, uh, with, the, with the Haifa, but uh, no, in your body you cannot, I mean, it, after you below, got below out, you don't, you uh, yes, don't you don't uh, feel, uh, I I work there to last mm -hmm. two year, two days for a long time in this magnetic field, and it's really uh, close to the beam, but it, there is nothing. I'm okay, like you see, I'm not I, I active like or magnetic. Sometimes a bit, in the, in the, yeah, like, you know, the, the equilibrium part, sometimes I, 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 I can feel it a little. Yeah, oh, maybe it was just like uh, dancing. <laughs> yeah, no, maybe it was just thinking. Yeah, about it's actually, like actually, you are in the psychological magnetic. effect. Yes, yes. 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 you be. see Noemi and, and Haifa, they, they started to play and we lost them. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. It, it's a, it's no, like you are in the, just, you, uh, you do was uh, in, uh, in the MRI uh, yeah, scanning. They go up to three tests so, <laughs> yes. so that's uh, uh, Yeah, that's okay. So I hope you you will enjoy also your next uh, visit for uh, our friends in Atlas. But we are going to close this room and they yes, have to we will. Yes, now one. we have to close this room. Uh, so you will go again to our Indico for the workshop for first ban African workshop, and then you get the link to the second visit oh, wait. with Atlas. Thanks for okay. all. Thanks, Thanks. for you. Have bye. a nice day. Ciao, ciao. Thanks, everyone. Hope you enjoyed. Bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye.